Welcome to a new video about MOSFET current source design. This is our example number six, where we discuss the CAS code configuration. We'll see step by step in our calculations how we can calculate the required values for this design and also verify this in SPICE simulations. So the circuits we have given is here. This is the simple current mirror configuration. You see here the M1 and M2, the simple current mirror configuration. And on top of that, the same configuration is using the M3 and M4. So this is now the CAS coded configuration so on top of each other. And the resistor R is there to create that reference current. We have two DC voltage sources, VDD and VSS. The valves are shown here and all the MOSFETs M1 up to M4 are matched. And they have the transfer voltage, the conduction parameter and the channel modulation as shown here. We consider the N-channel enhancement type MOSFET in this design. We need a design for a load current ID4, which is shown here, of 5 milliamps. So let's see how we can design this circuit. First of solutions, we go, we start first with the calculations. Now before we move on, let's designate the nodes where we set up the equations, node X and node Y here. Now we now set up the Kirchhoff's current load KCL at node X. That will actually mean the following. I ref will be ID3. Actually plus also this current, but since the gate currents are zero, we have only this expression. I ref is equal to ID3. We can also set up now the equation for the Kirchhoff's current law at node Y. That is now ID1 will be also ID3. Why? Because ID3 will be also the source current of M3, which is then also equal to ID1. Why? Because again, the gate current of M1 and M2 are zero. So there is no current flow here in this branch. Again, due to the gate currents are zero. Now, since ID1 and ID3 are equal to each other, we have that VGS1 and OVGS3 are equal because the gate to source voltage uh, of each MOSFET, if you consider channel length modulation to be zero, will determine the, uh, collect the drain current. So that is actually the con uh, consequence of that exact same drain current will give you also exact same gate to source voltage. Now, since VGS2 is equal to VGS1, why? Because this is parallel. You see that's just a parallel configuration. We have that ID2 must be equal to ID1. Now, since also ID2 is equal to ID4, why? Because the ID4 will be also the gate current and the source current here are equal to each other, but that is the gate current zero, so this will be just symmetric, so it goes through it. So ID4 is equal to ID2. So that is then also because of that, that the VGS2, again the same reasoning as before, will be equal to VGS4. Why? Because the drain currents are equal to each other. Now taking these together, these conditions together, we can say the IRF is equal to ID1, is equal to ID2, is equal to ID3, is equal to ID4. That means actually the currents here and the currents that are all equal to each other. It's just a replica. Because the MOSFETs are equal to each other, so there is an exact one-to-one -one unit copy. And the gate to source voltages are all equal to each other also for these four MOSFETs. Now the drain current, which is our load current, ID4, is given by this expression. You see here the Kn and also the VGS4 and also the threshold voltage specifically. And also that we, we don't have the channel length modulation, so there is no parameter here for the channel length modulation. Now when you now calculate the VGS4 here, just rewrite this expression, you get this. And if you now substitute the values for the Kn and also the ID4 and also the threshold voltage, you have two solutions. One of them is... 1.5, so plus 0.5 plus 1, and the minus 0.5 plus 1 will be then 0.5. Well, now, which one of these uh, is valid? This is mathematically correct, but this is larger than the threshold voltage, and that is valid, and this is smaller than the threshold voltage, which is invalid. So in order to use this equation, which is only valid in the saturation region of the MOSFET, you need to have that your gate to source voltage is larger than or equal to the threshold voltage, which is only valid here. So that means our solution for this is that the gate to source voltage will be 1.5 volts for M4. Then using the Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can have done the following that we apply here 
since the old gate to source voltage are equal, so that means VGS4 is 1.5, this is also 1.5 volts, also 1.5 volts, also 1.5 volts. Now when you apply now here the Kirchhoff's volts law and then express the resistor as shown here, so VDD minus VSS minus VGS3 minus VGS1, so we actually go from all the way to VDD to VSS, you divide by IREF, which is then uh, also ID4, so you have actually this. Now, when you do the calculation, you get here 5,400 ohms or 5.4 kilo ohms. Now, let's collect them here together. This is the these are the this is the resistor value we have just calculated, and this is the VGS4 we have determined, which is between this node and that node. Also, it is between that node and that node. Now this is a simulation circuit, you see here the ID3, ID4, ID1, ID2, and also the gate to source voltage. You see actually also the IRF here, and this is the 5.4 kilo ohms, and this is the VDD and VSS here as our DC power supply. Now you see indeed 5 milliamps for each, so you see that indeed this is correct. And also the 1.5 volts here for the VGS4, VGS1, and also the others are the exact same. So that means this is checked. All right, this was our example about the cast code configuration of the MOSFET current source. We have discussed how we can determine the gate to source voltages and from there the required resistor value for this design. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.